Hey everybody, Snoo here, and uh, Merry Christmas! It's Christmas Day, and uh, what a good time to start off uh, another video uh, when I'm not with my, hanging out with my family uh, because of the uh, travel restrictions still going on. Uh, I've decided that it's time to uh, begin a little series that I've decided to make, a series on high-end crafting. And this is going to be pretty exciting for you guys uh, to see how I've been able to accumulate quite a bit of currency in the past few leagues. Um, I, as you already know, if you're if you're subscribed to this channel, if you like this channel, then you probably already know I, I enjoy farming. I enjoy farming more than crafting, to be honest. Uh, making five to ten x an hour, it's pretty good currency. Uh, but it, honestly, just as you probably suspect, that pales in comparison to the kind of currency you make from crafting. So, um, what kind of currency per hour? Uh, person would I be if I didn't dabble in crafting uh, at least from time to time and every season I have done that and, and it has facilitated quite a bit of currency earning potential for me I like uh, you know putting some eggs in different baskets a little bit of crafting a little bit of farming uh, some other things I don't actually do services but that's also another good way to make currency uh, but this video is going to be focused on high-end crafting, and uh, what kind of high-end crafting video would it be if it did not start off with the infamous double-elevated Tailwind Onslaught boots with Elusive and the whole works. So, um, I, this is actually take two of this video, and I, I, did, I did make this video before, but I didn't like how it turned out because it was just so unbelievably long and convoluted. And that's because I actually went through the process of crafting it in real time. Um, long story short, it takes a while. <laughs> crafting is not an easy process. It, it absolutely does take some time. But even with the time it takes, it's still very lucrative. Uh, some would say possibly the most lucrative uh, form of making currency in the game. And I think that's true. I think it's definitely one of the top three ways so this time around I'm going to rely almost entirely on the website craft of exile uh, if you're not familiar with that website it's a brilliant tool that you can use this to, to simulate with in about 99% of totality you can simulate uh, your own craft in the website I'm gonna bring it up right now you go to Google and you type craft of exile.com and uh, it basically has two separate functions. There's a calculator for the calculator function is if you want to see your odds of crafting something. If you're targeting a very specific craft and you want to see your odds based on various crafting methods. That one's a little bit harder to understand. The more easier side to understand is the, is the actual emulator, which literally allows you to emulate uh, exactly doing your craft and seeing some of the various outcomes it's a great tool it saves tons of time it's highly accurate and I don't see any real reason not to rely almost entirely on this resource um, at least for explaining things you can either create a new item or import an item just uh, for fun I'll show you um, importing an item for example I type I do control alt C and that is the copy function on the import as you see it says right there I paste it in voila got my item here uh, now I'm not actually going to do that for these items but <coughs> well actually I can leave this one on here I suppose and then uh, on this side I'll just uh, let's see we will go into craft of exile again I need to actually have two tabs open and I'll explain why in a few minutes and I can create a new item we're doing boots, of course. Uh, I want to have the base of strength, dex, two-toned boots. Doesn't matter what this item quality it needs to be. Item level 86 above to have the opportunity to hit all valuable affixes potentially. So uh, before I get straight into the craft, again, you know, if you're someone who has been uh, dabbling with crafting, you know, just doing a few bench crafts here. Maybe you see the meta crafting, you know, cannot be, cannot roll attack modifiers, cannot roll cast modifiers, cannot be changed, suffixes cannot be changed, prefixes cannot be changed, you know, some of these really expensive meta crafting modifiers, and you're not sure if you really want to dabble into it. Well, you can uh, practice to your heart's content on Craft of Exile. 
and you can see what some of your odds are. Now, for high-end crafting, I don't recommend doing it until you have at least a bare minimum amount of game knowledge uh, about the game, at, at the very least, about the specific craft. This, the first video I'm making here about these boots is one of the safest crafts. You, you can trust me when I say, uh, if you craft these boots, you're not going to lose a lot of currency because uh, they're highly valuable. The market is somewhat saturated with this craft, but they're in such high demand across all so many different ascendancies um, that they just, they, you know, they fly off the shelf and new ones get put on the shelf. Those fly off the shelf. This kind of, the market's very active on this particular item. Uh, it is not a niche uh, high-end craft. Now, some of the videos I make in this little series, which will extend through various seasons, I suspect, um, as I continue learning myself, because I'm just giving you my knowledge, basically. I'm just showing you guys what I've learned and, and uh, some of the major ways I've made currency in the past and currently. Uh, but, you know, there, there are some niche items that come up. There was one in particular this season, which I do plan to share probably in the next video. But again, we're going to start with the boots. And uh, as you can see, I've already crafted some here. I've already got some. These two are finished here. I'll go into detail more on that later. These, I just did the Awaken of Slammed, and they're just sitting here waiting to be uh, finished. Or I'm not sure what I'll do with them yet. And then I have a couple here that have been pre-elevated, and they're waiting to be slammed. Which I'll do that at the end of the video for fun. Back to Craft of Exile. So, I have also a very nice um, file here, and I'm going to, you know, this will be in the description down below. Uh, the very steps in my opinion. So, my take on this craft, I want to actually explain in, in quite a bit of detail, using Craft of Exile, uh, the various different steps and... I want to also give you the estimated cost of this, because that's one thing a lot of videos don't do. They don't actually share the estimated cost in this, step by step, as well as the final outcomes. <clears throat> now, one of the problems with estimating the cost is that uh, the market is not 100% the same, always. You know, it changes from season to season, but for the most part, um, they, the numbers don't change a whole lot. Especially on this item, they don't change a whole lot. Like last season, Maven orbs were over four and a half to five x, and this season they're five and a half x. Okay, they're a little more expensive this time. They're going to sell for more as well. But here we go. So this is uh, this is the how to file here, and uh, the first few steps are actually the most confusing. Uh, so you need to take a little extra time on them. You'll see here uh, step zero is actually really important. I'm going to put step zero because one particular way I make currency doing this. That some people don't realize. Is I, don't, I don't always do a whole craft. I don't always buy it from step one and follow all these steps all the way through. That That's not smart to actually do that every time rigidly without exception. Um, what you want to do is you want to you wanna learn the craft well enough to kind of pinpoint holes in the marketplace where uh, you know various different things are happening and you can maybe cut corners in your craft. I got, a, I got a perfect example of that right here. So, I was taking a look <clears throat> right before I started this video. I wanted to see what uh, Tailwind boots were selling for. Tailwind boots that were ready to be elevated. Meaning, they had Tailwind, they, they had a Hunter influence, only one influence. They had Tailwind and only one extra uh, influence. And lo and behold, when I did that search, I came out with this. Now, if you see the search, looks pretty normal, right? Except this top listing. Something's wrong. This guy listed it for only one and a half X. The next few listings are five, five, six, six, six and a half. They look right. Uh, well, case in point, this individual, they uh, kind of made a mistake. They didn't have the game knowledge enough to know that uh, Tailwind with a second hunter influence modifier to be elevated, elevated ready, uh, is actually worth a lot more than one and a half. This person priced this particular item as if it only had Tailwind. I'll show you in a second that if you do the same search where there's only Tailwind and not a second influence modifier, they're all about one and a half X. So it was listed 
At the time, I messaged this individual around 30 minutes. The item had been listed for 30 minutes. And I thought, yeah, mistake. It even said AFK on there at the time. And I said, well, you know, this could be, I don't think this is a price fixer. I, I think this is actually like just an honest mistake uh, on uh, pricing the item. And, you know, maybe nobody did actually message this person 30 minutes. A little surprised because that's honestly, this is like a 3x profit just buying this item. I could just turn around and sell the same item for 4.5x, honestly. Uh, so I messaged him and boom, he sold the item to me. That's it. I, I made 3x right there. And that has that is not, of course, doing the craft, but because of my game knowledge and knowing how to set up some of my filters, which I'm going to give you in the description, uh, I know that the various different ways I can search for this item at certain intervals, certain steps in here, that I can, I can actually find and pinpoint holes in the marketplace and make a lot of currency um, that way. Now, this is more akin to flipping than it is to crafting, but I didn't buy this item to flip it. I bought it to craft it. I just saved around two, two and a half exalts in the crafting process by buying this item already ready to be elevated. Now, if I reset this search, boom, right there, 5x. Okay, this is what it should look like, right? Uh, it would not be a bad idea, and I did this last season, to have this set up this way and live search it, and then have down here something like you know, exalted orbs, minimum you know, 3x, you know, and just live search it that way. They will show up every now and then. And people will snipe them, and you can too, if you want. Uh, but anyway, enough with that. So, so that's just kind of a side point on there. I don't want to bring that up. Uh, this particular file here has is all about Tailwind. And this is like a full comprehensive list of various beginning steps of how you might purchase... Uh, your tailwind side of your boots i'll explain that a little bit more in detail but i actually want to start straight into the file over here on the left so it says here check trade verify the cost of differentials of items sitting at steps one or two those are the redeemer that's the redeemers portion or four and five that's the tailwind portion uh, to potentially save time and currency by purchasing them straight i did that with the tailwind side <coughs> just recently uh, let's go straight into step one here and see what it says. It says either roll or buy an item level 86 plus base of your choice redeemer influence boots with T1 onslaught plus one additional influence modifier. This whole process is going to cost you roughly three exalts right here. And, and there's, it's, it, I kind of embedded a couple steps in here. I'm going to explain that. Now, first of all, you only need to buy one base. You only need to have one specific base. Why did I choose it to be on the Redeemer side? I did that because well, I know the marketplace well enough to say that uh, <laughs> the cheaper uh, the, the cheaper side of the craft is the better one to put the base on. Tailwind is, is very challenging to hit on purpose. To, to buy a base and then force Tailwind onto it, uh, that's a really tedious process. It takes a lot of time and extra currency. However, to hit Tier 1 Onslaught, the weighting on Tier 1 Onslaught, which is uh, right here, is 500. The weighting on Tailwind is 100. Onslaught's five times easier to hit than Tailwind. So you got to actually do some work on the, on the portion with the base, usually. You can't just buy that straight out. So it's much wiser to buy the Redeemer one, uh, just generally speaking. And then if you check the market price, price fluctuation, like if I check the market and I put in the base I want and I check the same parameters, yeah, it comes out pretty steeply skewed so that it, it would cost me a lot of extra currency to have my base be on the tailwind side. Just trust me when I say that. You can check for yourself, but yeah, that's, that's how it is <laughs> for this particular craft. Uh, so... I need to go in here. I'll do this side for uh, this one here. Uh, so I have here all the various different possible crafts on the Redeemer side. I do want to mention here that on uh, step two, it says Maven or the Redeemer influence boots. So I'm actually going to kind of reverse engineer the, the price, the this process here, and I want to show you the varying costs of these steps. So let's say, for example, I wanted to potentially. Uh, 
purchase Redeemer Influence boots with already elevated. Do not have any other influence clean and the elevated modifier I want. You see that the minimum cost is, uh, well, 15x seems a little low. But uh, anyway, I, the, the, the market is in very short supply. This happened last season where I noticed that the market was in pretty short supply of Tailwind and uh, or Onslaught elevated boots uh, ready, like ready to be awakened or slammed. And I sold some this way. I made... I mean, I made like 5x a pop just selling boots like these, okay? So basically, I did about half of this craft, and instead of finishing it, I just sold it to, to let some gambler do the Awaken Orb and finish it themselves. And, you know, they save a lot of time that way, but they don't save currency. They spend extra currency for it, and I made extra currency doing that. So definitely look into that, possibly. Uh, we can do the same thing with uh, the Tailwind side right here and you see the results oh they also not similar this is really interesting so the market right now i just checked this a little earlier and they were like 19 20 exalts so the market uh, apparently is uh, again in in short supply or fluctuating on these as well the marketplace can be pretty volatile on items like these if i had you know what, not if I have. I'm just going to do this right now. Well, I'm on DND mode, so it doesn't matter. Um, one very smart thing for me to do would be to take these boots I have right here, you see, and list them for about 20 or 21 exalts. And I would make about 5 or 6x on average for that. That would be an intelligent thing for me to do, do right now. Because, yeah, somebody might buy them and they just want to slam They don't want to deal with having to roll it and everything. And they're just going to do that. But I'm not going to do that because I'm in the middle of making a video. <laughs> but if I was, if I wasn't making this video, I would absolutely do that right now. Uh, so, yeah, let's go back. So so that would be, that would be a potential thing you might want to buy. I mean, you could, you could go, go crazy and actually buy the item that has already been slammed like this. So these items have already been slammed. Weird to put this on uh, a base like that. Uh, okay, well, I would only ever want <laughs> a base to be... I don't know why this person chose that base. Uh, bases with implicit modifiers. You can see that on this craft, it says here, look at the estimated minimum cost. Sorry, I'm going a little bit all over the place right now, but I want to I kind of focus on the... Um, some of the various price points first. Uh, the estimated minimum cost of this craft is 28.5x and you can see that the very very cheapest one is trying to be sold for 30x. I did see some others for 30x a while, a while back. So that's like if you have like worst case scenarios on your RNG, you, you awaken orb slam and it just comes out terrible. Uh, you can still sell it for like 28x. Now that's the minimum cost. You're usually not going to get that lucky to to finish this craft that way. Estimated cost of the full craft is about uh, 45x, but you save money by skipping you know steps uh, 10, 11, 12, 13 by doing that. And some people will just buy an item like this and then they'll finish the craft themselves. They'll do that. So that is a possibility as well. I mean, you, there's various different steps you can, you can just jump in. And purchase and if, if you know the market well enough like if somebody listed something like this for 25x you would probably want to buy it and just start right there because that would be a pretty good price point uh, but usually you're not going to get that lucky and but but it's it's much easier to do that on the earlier steps like I mentioned how I bought those one boots for one and a half X when they're actually worth about four and a half X um, so yeah Let's start back to uh, step one, either roll or buy. And uh, Okay, so this is my base here. And to get Onslaught, so this is how I, this is actually how I would craft this item here. Uh, I would probably purchase the base, and then I would, let's see, I'd have to uh, get it rare, and then I would slam a Redeemer, or but I can't, so okay, we'll just scour and try it again. Slam a Redeemer Orb. 
Okay. Ironically, I got really lucky and, and, and hit Onslaught for <laughs> four seconds tier one. Very unlikely to happen. Uh, you know what? It's more realistic that uh, it's gonna it's gonna take a few tries. Now, the best thing to do here is to scour and do this all over and over again until you hit. It says here. Redeem our influence boots with T1 onslaught plus one additional modifier. Don't worry about the other additional modifier yet. Okay. Uh, first, we're just trying to hit T1 onslaught. And it, it, it will take roughly. You can do this with chaos orb spamming, or you can. Uh, Alk and scour is the smarter way to do it. second here ah uh, you know it, it might uh, it might happen quickly it might not I'll try it for a few minutes <laughs> or a minute or two to see if I can hit it but I uh, for the sake of keeping the video short I will my major just okay right there I hit it all right chance to gain on slot four seconds on kill nine percent that's tier one as you can see and this has to have an open prefix on it uh, in order to guarantee another influence modifier. And I'll show you in a second here. I'm actually going to rip one of these off right now. <clears throat> another good idea. If, for example, it came out this way and I had, let's say I had a couple additional uh, modifiers. And I have two open prefixes. Well, I have a chance here to do something that I can cut a corner here, potentially. I benchcraft. Um, what is it? I benchcraft. Life. Maximum life. It's way down here. Uh, yeah, any life roll. Uh, because life has a very high weighting on here. It's the highest weighting prefix in, in existence here at 9,000. So I'm blocking life because what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually uh, ch very cheaply. Uh, throw a beast craft onto it And actually I don't think I can uh, I'm not unfortunately be so so when I said um, Craft of exile has like 99% totality of possible crafts Here's part of the 1% that it does not exist in the game. So you can actually go in. I'll just show you here. I'm not up to that just yet. You can beast exalt slam an item and it's very cheap to do this an exalted orb you know you can obviously exalt or whatever but you can uh, add a mod to a hunter item or a redeemer item for a phenomenal queen and a krakic maw and you're gonna see that those two items these two items are extremely cheap phenomenal queen as a beast Oh, uh, wow. Two, three chaos apiece. That's nothing. You buy those in bulk. Krakic Maw is more expensive. But way, way, way less than an Exalted Orb. And so this is this is the go-to way. It's a, lot, a lot of people aren't aware of. This is how you Exalt Slam influenced items. It's way cheaper than trying to Exalt Slam with Harvest or Leo Slam. This is the cheapest way you can do it, but you can only do it with influence modifiers. And it's costing 25 to 30 chaos a pop i bought these in bulk at like 25 chaos a piece so it's very very cheap to buy that and when the opportunity presents itself you're going to want to beast slam exalt in there so because the craft doesn't have that as an option i'm just gonna click exalted orb and this will represent a 30 chaos ish uh slam into a prefix just in case i hit a hunter modifier i did not now i have one prefix open which i have it as a craft so that's a typical outcome usually it won't give you a uh, influence modifier but it's so cheap to do that it's actually worth doing it um and now we're gonna go and we're gonna do suffixes cannot be changed and we're gonna guarantee oh i have to uh Remove the craft here. Suffixes cannot be changed. And then, again, we're, we're still on step number one here. 
we got to get onslaught plus one additional influence modifier and the best option to do that and we're going to do this later on in the craft actually we're going to go to harvest craft and we're going to we're in critical not augment sorry <laughs> reroll or reroll more likely it doesn't matter and this is going to result in elusive being on a prefix with onslaught remaining on there now that cost me the base for this item is roughly around half an exalt or less the boots just the boots by themselves 86 plus two tone boots of this base type is around half an exalt or less uh the redeemer orb is is right at half an exalt and then to craft uh the meta craft suffix cannot be changed it's too exalt to get critical on there uh reforge critical to buy it on harvest like 10 to 20 chaos that's where the 3x comes in from the, all that combination there is 3x or or i could just try to buy i mean i could see obviously i could go in and i could see you know i want the base i want it to be armor evasion base item level 86 and uh To have one, this is the setup for it to be ready to elevate. And, and there's actually nothing. There's there's literally nothing on the market. <laughs> or I could have this set up here. Yeah, th there's just nothing on the market for the base itself. Like with the base, I need. It. See, and this is why you want the, the side in which your base item is going to be. You want that to be the easier craft. I, I won't have to that like I really do have to like do all the steps probably for the side that has the base because it just doesn't exist on uh, ready to go on the website unfortunately so that is done on this side basically done and the next step to do here is to maven orb the redeemer influence boots this is five and a half exalt maven orb boom now this did not come out the way I wanted to the step three skip step three says skip this step assuming the maven orb slam resulted in elevated onslaught otherwise return to step one which is where the additional 5.5 x is in there i wrote this in red because this is the green represents guaranteed costs essentially and the red is more adding in the estimated cost because this is a 50 50 coin flip i, I went ahead and threw a, in, a, in red text here 5.5 x additional now, the nice thing about the Redeemer Slam is if you fail this one, you do not lose all of this currency. If we go on, and we actually check... I didn't actually prepare for this in particular. <clears throat> but you can see that the result is I got Elevated Elusive. And if we go in and we check uh, Elevated Elusive... This is at least worth 1x. At least. And if it's uh, set up on two-tone boots, item level 86, it's worth more than 1x. It's worth 4 or 5x, apparently. That's surprising to see that that high. I'm not so sure about that because I have... That seems strange. I have uh, them right here. So I this right here that you're seeing is is in fact a failed elevated redeemer boots that, that hit elusive on effect and i've already sold one of these for two and a half x i have one more left over at 2.6x i may drop the price uh something came out a little weird on this I'm not sure why why my own boots are not showing up on this list <laughs> anyway um yeah if you try to search uh, for increase elusive effect you're going to find that uh, you can sell them back. Not true if you fail the Tailwind side because those those mods are useless. The other alternative mods. But people do sometimes want to slam Tailwind and Elusive together. Not a very intelligent craft in my opinion. But uh, somebody who doesn't care about Onslaught at all and just wants to really... <laughs> it's like a big gamble when you're slamming up an elevated prefix and an elevated suffix together because you're going to end up with a lot of randomization there. Uh, and it's just not an intelligent craft for the most part, but some people like to do it anyway. So, hats off to them, I guess. 
<laughs> but anyway, so we got to do it again. And because Craft of Exile is a tool, I don't have to actually go through the whole arduous process of doing it again. I can just click this friendly little button here that says undo and I can try it again. You know, I already went through step one and two and three again and we may have an orb and uh, oh, we missed again. Well, all right, so that's unfortunate. So my RNG is kind of bad this time. Well, it's bad again. Okay, whatever, you know, eventually you do this, you're gonna hit this. And uh, you know, again, this is, this is just coin flips. It's playing with the odds. You do enough of these crafts, the RNG is gonna even itself out. Don't worry about it. Sometimes you get a run of bad luck. When it comes to high end crafting, you do kind of want to have some currency saved up for a rainy day. And we have the boots that we're looking for here. This is this is what we're doing. So this base is ready to go. And uh, this is basically steps one, two, and three finished. Now we move on to step four. Step four is the hunter side. Now the hunter side presents an opportunity to buy. There's definitely an opportunity to buy like, like what I did buy. Uh, I'm not gonna buy elevators. So <clears throat> obviously you could, you could just purchase the elevated hunter boots and pay 24 exalts, not a good idea. This might be worth doing if it was as low as 15 or 16 or 14 exalts. Even then, probably not really worth doing. So absolutely, I'm not going to buy these at the current pricing. Uh, what I'm going to do is potentially buy them so it's ready to be uh, elevated, which I did do uh, with the with the poor soul who sold me <laughs> his boots for 3x cheaper than he should have. Uh, and that would be these right here. Here. No, I'm sorry. I don't even need the prefix. Okay, that would represent these right here. Wow, last time we just checked this like a couple minutes ago. It was 5x. All the way up to 6x now. Uh, nope, not going to do that. Not worth it because this whole process only cost about 3x. Uh, now, what I might end up doing <coughs> is buying Tailwind, again, with clean, with no other influence, with either an open prefix or... A crafted prefix so that I can meta craft suffixes cannot be changed uh, and this is just with tailwind on it this is like literally the beginning step and 1.5 remember how I said that guy probably thought he, you know he was looking at this list he was not looking at this list he should have been pricing his item against these but instead he was pricing it against these and consequently he undervalued his item. So these are all clean tailwind boots that have no second influence modifier. So I could awaken orb tier one tailwind, but I don't want tier one tailwind. I want elevated tailwind. So how do I get elevated tailwind? Well, let's see. Let, let, let's say for example that uh, I purchased one of these here. I can't, uh, I can't, I can't really just purchase them outright. But anyway, let, let's say, you know, I have these random boots here and, uh, I purchased boots like that and they have tailwind. Boom. Regular tailwind. Okay. Th this is similar to the boots I just found. Uh, it's probably going to have another, um, uh, let's say for example, it has another, uh, prefix. Be more realistic. Okay, so let's buy. So let's say I, I purchase boots like this for 1.5. Now, if I didn't purchase these, well, then I have to purchase. I'd go all the way down to <laughs> uh, this right here, and this is all hunter influence item level. Now, actually, I forgot to put that in. It needs to be item level 75 or higher to represent, uh, so it's because it has to be at least item level 75 in order to hit Tailwind, you can see right there, 75, you have Tailwind, it's only one tier. Uh, so it does have to be 75. And if it's, cl the closer it is 75, the better, because it blocks off some other high tier rolls. And, uh, but, but anyway, I usually never manually roll Tailwind on there. I usually buy, personally, I usually, uh, will buy 
boots like this. Uh, sorry, not like this. I'll, I will buy boots uh, just like this. This is this is the most common purchase that I make right here. Boots like this, basically, uh, for around one to one point five x. And because it costs at least on average one x on average to just hit Tailwind, uh, it it and it costs even more than one x. It costs time. You're looking at like twenty minutes of rerolling, and it's just it's hard on your hands. And you could have been making currency doing something else in that twenty minutes. It's just a lot of time. In my opinion, usually it's better to just buy them with Tailwind already on them. Late in the season, that is. And uh, let's see here. So I'm going to once again attempt to beastcraft my item. I'm going to throw uh, Max Life on there. It, has, it still has an open suffix. So again, uh, beast crafting options on the website don't exist. So effectively, as you saw earlier with the Redeemer item, it's a beast craft exalt stamp. It costs around 30 chaos through beast craft crafting. And boom, I hit that. And oh my goodness, lo and behold, I got lucky and I hit an influence modifier. Now let's pretend, no, and that's ready to go. I can just elevate it there. I saved, actually saved a bit of currency doing that. And that's why you should beast craft. But let's say, for example, I didn't hit that. And I hit something like this. Well, now to guarantee an influence modifier, because this this is a more common result. Uh, this I am going to benchcraft. Prefixes cannot be changed. I have to remove that. Or suffixes cannot be changed. Sorry. Uh, so it's got full suffixes and five prefixes, and suffixes cannot be changed. So I'm going to re-roll the prefixes here, or reforge the prefixes here. And as you can see, for the hunter influence, I got a tag here, a common tag called chaos. Whereas chaos does not exist as a tag on the other prefixes, that is going to guarantee me an influence modifier, just like elusive is guaranteed on uh, the redeemer's side. So I'm going to go in a harvest craft, I'm going to forge. Now actually, because there are two potential options here, it's most intelligent to do chaos reforge. It says reroll on the website. It means reforge, uh, not reforge more common because you might end up throwing both chaos modifiers on there. <laughs> chaos influence modifiers, which means you'll have three influence modifiers and you can't, you don't want to maven orbit with three because then you reduce your chances dramatically of hitting uh, elevated tailwind. So just doing regular chaos, and this is going to come out pretty typical. It's just going to have one prefix on there. It hit the chaos. Of course it had to. Uh, and then this is ready to elevate. And just like the other side, this is an estimated 3x cost. Because it's going to cost me 1 to 1.5 one exalts per half to buy Tailwind. Or it's going to cost me like 20 chaos to buy boots and another X to roll Tailwind on it. And then usually the Beastcraft exalt thing is not going to turn out good, but it can. Assuming it does not, I'm going to have to metacraft, which is going to be 2x to get chaos on there. So you're looking at 3 to maybe 3.5 exalts for step 4. Step 5, Maven Orb, the Hunter Influence Boots. And, okay, good. I'm showing you some of the more, you know, the results going to happen this way. Sometimes it hit uh, level 2 of chaos socketing gems, and um, we're going to see <laughs> very quickly that... Uh, this is not very good. Level of socketed chaos gems. Let's just see what this is worth, just for fun. Uh, oh, and quality of socketed chaos gems. I'm sorry, I should put that in. Quality of socketed... Oops, I'm on the wrong item here. Quality... I need to go to this tab. Quality of socketed chaos gems. What is this worth? 1x. Okay, so you <laughs> you might be able to sell this. Now, I've tried to sell an item like this before, and it quite often doesn't sell. But, you know, it's worth putting up for, like, you know, throw it on, throw it on trade for, like, half an exalt. You might sell it. Maybe a full exalt. I don't know. You can make it a tiny little money back. It's nothing like elusive. It's not a very desirable stat. So unfortunately, when you miss the Maven Orb on the Tailwind side, you really do lose about all of that money. Uh, so it says here, uh, skip to step 
assuming the maven orb slam resulted in elevated tailwind otherwise return to step oh, I actually need to change that don't I not step one no not step one it should be step four glad I caught that <laughs> in real time uh, so to do that to simulate here because we got the emulator we can just try to slam it again this time and okay this time I got lucky and a hit. So overall, my RNG so far on the Maven Orbs has been bad, uh, but not terrible bad. But I'm definitely down about 10x, <laughs> which is, you know, that's going to happen. Uh, you can make another pair of boots and just hit it every single time. You never know. So these two items are what I have here, and they're ready to be uh, Awaken Slammed. To Awaken Slam, you're going to hit... Uh, I, I hit the uh, Awaken Orb which is right here. Use the export function to get the item to be destroyed data. Now this is kind of convoluted, but what I need to do is I need to go into the other tab. This is why you have to have two tabs if you're gonna mess with awaken orbs. You have to hit export over here. It says generate export data. This is for the trash item. The item is going to be destroyed. I'm gonna copy this entire massive string of data and put it in here and boom instant awaken orb result now awaken orb slam this is step seven we just did awaken orb slam the elevated onslaught and elevated tailwind together and pray for a good third suffix roll actually i'm gonna put that over here actually whoops so i made a little note here uh, yeah, and it says third suffix RNG. So this is the only part of the craft that is not highly deterministic. So this entire craft is surprisingly deterministic. But this one, there is one affix that you are just completely, almost completely at the game's mercy. And that is your third suffix during the Awaken Slam. Usually, it closes your suffixes just like this. And what it gave me was 25 lightning res. 25 lightning res. Well, hey, you know, that's not too bad, right? 25 lightning res. Let's see what 25 lightning res is worth. Right here, uh, plus 20%. Da, 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 da. I can do pseudo check on this. Total res. So I, I'm doing a live search on essentially what uh, this would be. Oops, hold on a second here. And does this come out right? Huh, that's strange. Didn't come out right at all. Hmm, number of total and total all. Oh, this should be right. I'm not really sure why that's not uh, showing up for... Oh, it's because it's counting the implicit. <laughs> it's counting the implicit. I forgot I got to add 24 to that. So, uh, okay. <laughs> there we go. This will be right. Okay, as you can see here, this is a good, simu this is a good example here. So I got uh, tier 5 cold res. Uh, tier 6 lightning res. I got... Tier 5 cold res, I got tier 4 cold res, I got tier, you know, uh, tier 3 cold res. And as you can see, <clears throat> the value of the items uh, is, is much higher now. Wow. So hitting a mid-level re uh, res is good. That's a good result. Uh, better than average, anyway. Uh, this one seems a little bit low, but that's because this person didn't finish the craft, I guess? Uh, actually, they did finish the craft. They, okay, they got the, the bad ising version. I'm surprised to see this. Long. It's only been listed for two hours. This problem, this item right here is probably going to sell pretty quickly. Uh, I, it does seem like this this result would ultimately result in an item that's worth about 50 to 60 exalts, I think. Notice that uh, if I went all the way to the actual base I'm using, it goes up to 65 exalts, so maybe even more. Uh, let's check another result here. I don't really need that anymore. I can hit undo. Do it again. Sometimes, when you do the slam, it does not close the suffix. So now this is a good... <coughs> I 
this is a good representation of, of uh, step number eight. Step number eight, you're usually going to skip, but if it hit the way I just did it right here on my second example, Awaken Slam, you actually need to pay attention to step number eight. So skip the step assuming the Awaken Orb Slam resulted in closing the third suffix. If not, sell the item as is for profit. Sell the item as is for profit for potential there. Uh, why? Well, because if I go in here and I click... Um, Ah, suffix modifiers, whoops, suffix, uh, empty suffix at least one, or crafted suffix at least one, a little bit of my game knowledge here, knowing how this works, um, this will represent um, the item I'm, I'm showing here, now this is kind of odd. <coughs> Um, actually, this should show up one of my boots right here. I'm not sure. Um, maybe my search is not quite right, but I have an example of boots right here. I have, uh, this happened to me actually, my very first craft of this, this season, uh, resulted in an open suffix. So I decided to finish the craft, uh, with the open suffix available. Why did I do that? Well, because I'm casting a wider net of potential buyers. Uh, I might find, you know, some whale who just wants to take their chances and gamble with the last suffix, <laughs> since that is the big RNG component. Um, I might find somebody who wants to craft a beast aspect, like aspect of the cat or aspect of the spider onto the boots, potentially. They can do that with these boots to make a decent suffix. Uh, but not everybody's going to want an aspect, right? So I don't want to just craft an aspect and then try to sell it, because that would greatly diminish uh, my buyer's market. Um, but anyway, uh, so th this is, I finished this craft in a way that made the prefixes really good, but also gives an opportunity to close the suffix in some way, potentially. Alternatively, you could, if you don't, uh, sell it for profit, you can, metacraft suffixes cannot be changed and harvest reforge light or chaos for a likely favorable outcome. Let's see what happens when we do that. Um, okay, so that would be... Benchcraft here. Suffixes cannot be changed. This has, has an open suffix, so if I go in and I reforge uh, lightning, it's guaranteed to hit an elemental resist. It's going to be lightning resin. You can always change your resistance over uh, with things like um, like this. No, uh, no, I don't want lightning. Okay, I want... Uh, Sorry, I want uh, I want lightning to fire. I want fire instead. Oh no, never mind. I don't want fire. I want uh, lightning. <laughs> oh no, I want uh, cold. Right? So you can always change the res over anyway with a harvest craft. Uh, but yeah, it could hit that. You know, it might hit. Um, you know, I hit tier two again. Now, this is lucky. This is high tier. It might only hit tier four. But see, it's guaranteed. Oh wow, it hit tier one. Oh, that's big money right there. Uh, what, what is that worth? See, that's not a bad idea to do that uh, with an item because if you hit a high tier res, you're gonna get you're gonna get something off of that. Uh, let's see here. If I go on, I do. Uh, I type elemental resistance. 24 plus 40, so let's say at 64, this would basically be like tier 3 or higher. You're looking at <clears throat> around 70 exalts. Okay, this is tier 2, this is tier 2, tier 1, going to tier 1, 130 exalts. So if you hit tier 1 resistance, you're looking at easily a 100x item, easily, um, basically, yeah. Uh, of course, the chance of hitting that is not super high, but hey, this is high-end crafting. Sometimes you are going to hit really good, and uh, you know you can use it for yourself, or you can sell it for tons of currency and turn around and craft five more <laughs> of the item, and then see what you get. And you know you can quickly see how your currency can snowball in a positive way into making lots of currency. You do have to have some patience. People don't just buy the item instantly. It usually takes uh, a day or two, maybe even a week to sell a high-end craft, so that is the downside to it. 
But you know, if you're playing the currency, I'm coming out with this video two thirds of the way through the season. I like to play the whole season, or just about the whole season. So, if you're someone like that, then you don't. Then high crafting is definitely a wise idea. Ironically, I hit increased movement speed as well. Tier one, that is a potential result. Uh, that's going to be really rare to hit that, but that's why we use an 86 item level base because 86 uh, can actually hit tier one movement speed potentially, which uh, saves me a step. I don't have to do the Isling process. Uh, there is no elusive. You can't put elusive on these boots, but you know, in this case, I could close it out, for example, with. Um, I don't know, in this case, I could just craft life, tier one life, and then beast exalt slam, the last prefix in, uh, just like uh, exalted orb, and maybe get something decent, a uh, mid-tier level armor and evasion, not terrible. This would be a decent result as well, or I could, um, I could just move on and just do something else here, uh, which lets us go on to uh, step nine. Now, usually, when you do double elevated onslaught and tailwind boots, you have elusive as well. Elusive is very important for most builds, and uh, you're gonna want that on there. It's very easy to put on there, just like when we uh, were trying to set up the elevated redeemer base. Uh, we're gonna do the same thing here by crafting. Yeah, let's say I'm working on a very lucky uh, tier one lightning res. Um, Oh, I almost mentioned, I forgot to mention that instead of lightning, you could reforge chaos as well. The, the result of chaos would be potentially chaos resistance or uh, something like this, which only has one tier. 50% chance to avoid being poisoned and to avoid being bled would be, would be quite a powerful modifier as well. I think it's worth quite a bit. Uh, I'm actually a little curious what that's worth here. Curious what this is worth. Let's find out. Oh, doesn't exist. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Apparently it doesn't exist. No, wait, 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 I think I miss, I miss, put that on there. Chance to avoid bleeding, huh. This is, by the way, it's not easy to work with this site in every way. It is a bit challenging sometimes, but again, I'm going to at least give you kind of the, the setup, pre-setup uh, this way. It should have been right. Avoid bleeding, maybe. Okay, <laughs> maybe, uh, hmm. Ah, uh, I see. Yeah, here it is. Uh, so avoid bleeding or avoid, uh, poison. Oh, sorry, it wouldn't, it wouldn't actually hit avoid bleeding, would it? No, because... Uh, that one is, um, attack. oh no, it does. Oh, wow, that's weird. <laughs> Chance to avoid being poisoned, to avoid bleeding. Well, it rolls both on there, I guess. Yeah, it rolls both. See the right there, they're separated for some reason. It says here, uh, 46% chance to avoid bleeding, 41% chance to avoid, I'd say 46% chance to avoid being poisoned, 41% chance to avoid bleeding. That is the hunter mod on that particular item, but if we try to search double elevated um, and the same thing, it just doesn't even come up. I saw it recently, actually. I saw it and um, it was expensive. It was like 80X or something like that. So that would be pretty cool. I mean, you'd, you'd have the only boots like that on the whole market right now, if you hit that. And, and it would be valuable for most classes. So that said, let's go back here. Now let's pretend I do want elusive. I'm not even going to take the movement speed. Now, honestly, if if these were if this was a boost I was working with right here, 
I'm probably just scratch elusive and I would sell it to a, a shadow ascendancy or whatever ascendancy that gets elusive automatically and I'd let them handle that. I might even sell the boots just like this with an open prefix, honestly. <laughs> but anyway, let's go into step nine. Get elusive as a prefix roll by metacrafting suffixes cannot be changed. And harvest reforge critical. Harvest reforge critical. Boom. Right there. It came out clean. Now, there's a few different things that can happen at this point. Uh, they said you may ha initially have to harvest reforge to keep suffixes to open a prefix slot. So what that means is, let's say for example, I, I awaken orb my item, or I and I get or I get the lightning res on the item. There there is something here that can quite often happen. Something like this. This is the item. Well, I can't reforge suffixes cannot be changed if I have three prefixes already on the item. So I, I would have to take an, an additional step and reforge keep suffixes to rip out to, to open the prefix effectively, keeping the suffixes in, in intact. Uh, now I can craft suffixes cannot be changed. That harvest craft, by the way, is an extra two X. I did not calculate that in here because it, usually it doesn't happen. But anyway, now we go back here and we can uh, put reroll critical. As you can see, usually it comes on clean. It just comes on clean with four because when you when you create or reforge a rare item, it has a tendency to only roll four affixes total. It already has three suffixes, so it's only going to have one prefix most of the time. Now that time it ran five uh, affixes, not four. This is one. Now see, it took me like twelve hits to even get one that hit six affixes. Uh, but yeah, usually, and and you need it clean. Now, what do I do if this happens here? Uh, step 10 says, skip this step assuming the harvest reforge resulted in only one prefix. If not, harvest, crap, reforge, uh, keep suffixes if three prefixes, then return to step 7. No, not step 7. That's a mistake. Fixing this in real time. <laughs> Return to step 9. <laughs> or metacraft suffixes cannot be changed if two prefixes without a high tier life or movement speed roll. This hit two prefixes with a low movement speed roll. I don't want that movement speed roll. So what I have to do in this case, this is another somewhat common result, is uh, metacraft suffixes cannot be changed. Now you might think you, you, you should re-roll critical again, like this, right? But actually, you know, you might... You, you, you might have a bad result here. You might hit, uh, you might get five or six affixes again. So the smart thing to do here is to actually annul orb. I might annul elusive, in which case I'll go ahead and do the critical reforge. I might lose, uh, I might hit the movement speed, which would be good. Uh, or the worst case scenario is it annuls suffixes cannot be changed. <laughs> I got lucky and it, and it removed the, the movement speed. Uh, so that's good. And that sets me up for step number 11. I need suffixes cannot be changed on the item anyway. Because I got to Isling the item next. And I don't want it Isling to rip off any of my suffixes. <laughs> Heaven forbid. Uh, I want to reduce the chances that Isling messes up. This is post nerf Isling. And it's okay, it's still very deterministic because it's a 50% or uh, 50-50 coin flip, which is, in, in the grand scheme of things, when it comes to high-end crafting, this is very deterministic. Uh, it's listed here in the Syndicate side. This is Isling, replaced a random modifier on a rare with an item with a veiled modifier. And one of two things is going to happen here. Either Isling removes my elusive or she removes my benchcraft. If she removes my elusive... That would be bad. Now it says here, skip uh, step 12. Skip this step, assuming T4 Isling didn't remove elusive, which it did not, so I can skip. But otherwise, it would be returned to step number. I gotta fix that one too. Step number 
and that would cost roughly 6x because Eisling itself costs 4x on average if I search uh, TFT. If I search TFT in here. In the early on in the season, Eisling is very cheap. 1 or 2x, but you know, once you're midway through the season, it becomes much more expensive. Four X, two point five. If somebody doesn't have hardly any vouchers there, three X. Oh wow, four X, three, three, four. Okay, the price seems to be a little lower than usual uh, currently, but generally, um, yeah, it's gonna be four <laughs> uh, X. I'd say. So it's two X to put suffixes cannot be changed, and then four X to craft Isling on there. Now. Where are we at here? We got, this is a good case scenario. Now, I could unveil this right now, but that would not be smart because post-nerf Isling, you can actually benchcraft to block. Uh, and I can block at least life uh, as a roll. I have to have movement speed as an Isling unveil. So what I want to do is I want to bench prefix uh, maximum life. Go ahead and make it uh, rank four because um, that we're finishing the craft now. This this is home stretch. There is a very low chance that Isling would not give me a movement speed here, and I'll show you here. Veiled prefix options. Uh, T1 life armor uh, hybrid. Uh, there's three separate movement speed with high weighting on all three. There's max life which we blocked. There's max mana. And then there's evasion while focused. So technically the options could be max mana, evasion while focused, and uh, hybrid life and armor. I have seen that happen once out of like 30 crafts or something in the lifetime. Like it's super rare. Uh, something like, you know, less than 5% chance, I think. So we can now hit unveil. And we can see that it only came up with one movement speed. That's unfortunate because it's the worst one. This one is basically useless uh, as far as um, the secondary effect. So, so the options here are uh, cannot be chilled, more onslaught chance on kill, and movement speed if you haven't been hit recently. Uh, chill and movement speed are the two better ones. Uh, onslaught is useless because it's already on the suffix. <laughs> so it's like you don't need more chance to get onslaught on kill. You don't need that. Um, just play around with this a second here. Um, let's see what other possibilities come up with. There's mo cannot be chilled. Uh, it's right there. Uh, another possibility here. Onslaught again. Uh, if you haven't been hit recently, it tends to only uh, unveil one. Here, here's an example of absolute worst case scenario happening. There is no no movement speed. Again, this is like a five percentile chance. There's that one. That's a good one. So, again, the emulator is fun to play with. You can see how frequently uh, you would hit something doing what I'm doing right here oh well I hit nothing again anyway let's pretend I hit uh, cannot be chilled the item is basically done uh, one other thing that the emulator does not have is um, this craft right here I'm not up to that just yet Reroll the values of prefix suffix and implicit modifiers on a rare item with lucky modifier values that is step number 14. I kind of skipped 13 there. I was explaining it. But yeah, we benchcraft rank 4 life. Unveiled modifier for a movement speed roll. Almost guaranteed to have a movement speed roll. Return to step, uh, <laughs> step 9. If no movement speed roll presents itself. Uh, 0x because that's extremely rare. So I didn't even put in an x on there. But it might happen to you. It did happen to me once. Uh, use a combination of harvest rerolls until the item has perfect rolls on at least a movement speed. You at least want 30% movement speed. 
In this case, it shows uh, 25%, but you want to at least have 30% movement speed. Um, you want to probably have at least 20% on tailwind effect, and I, I prefer to have at least 10 on the increased attack cast and movement speed. I think that one's pretty important to have perfect, as well as 10 on the elusive. Uh, this whole process is going to cost you maybe a total of around 10 rerolls, something like 1x. You know, the rerolls are like 15 to 20x, or 20, 15 to 20 chaos <laughs> a piece here. I can prove that on here if I go in and I check uh, harvest. And so, do this channel here. If I check uh, reroll all from people who have a good standing, it's, uh, wow, reroll all times 7, 15 chaos a piece. That would be a good buyer right there. I mean a good seller. Uh, yeah, 15 chaos a piece, most of them. So it's absolutely, you, you, on high end crafting, you do want to actually perfect the item in the end or nearly. Uh, for the emulator, I'm forced to just use divine orbs. But divine orbs are nowhere near as good uh, because I can't isolate the suffix or prefixes once I perfect one side. And uh, when you're re-rolling all with lucky modifiers, it re-rolls each, each individual mod twice and results in only the high, the highest roll. So sometimes you're going to re-roll all and you're, you're literally just going to basically instantly create a, an almost perfect item. Uh, that's happened to me numerous times. Finally hit 30% movement speed, but the elusive is bad. So, you know, the divine orb is not what you actually want to use when I'm doing here because the results will be much worse than uh, what you would normally see. Anyway, uh, I'd, I'd try to get either the suffixes or the prefixes good. And uh, then I would focus on the other side once uh, one side is perfect with like re-roll suffix only or re-roll prefix only. So uh, recapping, estimated minimum cost, 28.5x, uh, shown here by the green text. Uh, estimated average cost, 45x. I got unlucky with the Maven Orbs. I think this item would have costed me, you know, with the Maven Orbs cost me roughly, uh, you know, maybe 55 to 60x uh, to do, kind of how I did it. But, uh, you know, you try it for yourself. Tell me how it goes in the comments. And let me know if you like the video, too, if you want to see more crafts like this. Um, I'm going to close this video out now here in a second. I have... Um, just show you some of the items I have here. So, again, I, I have these boots here. Uh, they will probably sell around 80x, actually. With an open suffix, they will sell... Maybe 70, 80x. I'm lowering the price slowly. It's another good uh, tip <laughs> when you're crafting. Um, these boots here, they not turn out so well. They hit, uh, on the random suffix, they hit tier 3 life regen. Not a good hit. And uh, But I did hit movement speed and saved a lot of money by not having to Isling. These boots are probably not actually worth 50x, but they're worth maybe 40. Most of the boots you craft are going to be worth at least 40 uh, and then I have these boots here that I slammed and they hit tier 3 dext. What is tier 3 dext worth? Actually, that's a good question. Tier 3 dexterity. ADX? Whoa! 80 exalts. What about more like a tier 5 dext? 60x. So. As you can see, with, with this particular um, base, you can see that uh, hitting a mid to high tier dex roll is pretty good. It's actually pretty nice, and that is going to sell uh, well when I finish it. So I need to finish this item. I absolutely want to finish this item, but I need to get... So what am I going to do next? I'm going to put suffixes cannot be changed. I'm going to reforge critical to get elusive. Clean elusive, I'm going to put suffixes cannot be changed again. I'm going to Isling, try to get Isling movement speed on there with elusive movement speed and then craft life and then re-roll it until it's near perfect and then it's done. I'll try to sell it for, you know, 70x-ish there. Uh, before we go, finish the video here uh, just for fun. Since the opportunity has presented itself, we are going to 
slam a tailwind into my base just like I had before. This is represented by step number seven. This is the big RNG moment. So let's see what happens. Can't watch. Oh, that's very good. That's very good. That's tier one dex. Oh, tier one dex. That is big. So that's exciting. That's probably near 100x, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, tier one <laughs> dex troll. I don't even know if that exists. Uh, there's one. There's one on the auction house on the trade website for 120x. Uh, finished with cannot be chilled and frozen actually with a different base. So I'm not exactly the same uh, But yeah, you lo we're looking at probably a 100x item there for t1 um, Dexterity the big hit so I'm excited to see that I don't need it for myself uh, I'm trying to hit uh, I would have loved to have seen a t1 elemental resist, but didn't hit it. That's cool uh, The prefixes it randomly hit uh, increased armor and evasion. That's fine again to close this item same thing as the other. Reforge suffixes cannot be or suffixes cannot be changed. Reforge critical. Then I get the suffixes cannot be changed again. Get Isling on there. Then finish out with the life. Or cannot be frozen potentially. And the boots are done. After with some rebels. So I will finish those up as well. Uh, I've blown a lot of currency <laughs> getting the crafts has resulted in me only having six X. <laughs> With a bunch of chaos at the moment so i can't actually finish them uh right now i need to uh do a little more farming but yeah let me know what you thought of this video i know it was long but it was uh you know quite detailed and giving you my thought process on various steps i think most of the value that i was able to bring to you in this video was early on um or the early steps of and, and just pointing out that when you're doing these high-end crafts you don't necessarily have to look at it as in, oh, I, I you know, I want this item with these um, rolls. You have to be willing to 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 take your losses, or or better yet, to take your wins and uh, sell the item. So I know that uh, even though I hit thirty nine decks as a suffix on here, that's a win. This is a win, and I'm going to sell uh, this item. And I'm going to sell this item. This is a big win. It's not what I wanted. And I'm trying to craft these for myself. But I'm going to sell those items fine. I know that um, when I hit something like this, I don't necessarily have to try and close the suffixes. I definitely don't want to just exalt slam the third suffix. Uh, I can prep the item in such a way that I can cast a wide net and then sell it to somebody else who wants to close the suffix themselves, either with an aspect of a beast craft or you know i mean hell they may want to augment influence modifier i don't know. You know something different you know it's their choice it's a wide net so a lot of potential buyers there um yeah so i will have to cre keep crafting more of these <laughs> until i hit a high tier um elemental res but i'll sell many in the process i will make uh, a fair bit of currency and all along the while I will probably have a live search set up for something like, oh, let's see, something like this. With three exalts max. And I'll just buy an item if it comes out this way. And just live search this and maybe uh, I'll, I'll get lucky and I'll indirectly uh, save three exalts in the crafting process by doing that. So another huge tip there is, is take a look at the market on some of the early steps. See if you can't bypass some of those steps and save a lot of currency in the process. Uh, the next craft I'm going to do, I think it's going to be my quiver. This, this quiver is much more of a niche high-end craft. Uh, the market could be fluctuated a little bit if a lot of people suddenly started doing this craft but i kept seeing quivers like this with various different bases uh, i kept seeing them put on the trade site for 30 40 50 x and i kept seeing them you know come and go disappear and reappear and obvious it's obvious to me that there was at least a few 
high-end uh, double dot multi quiver crafters who were making bank <laughs> on that. And um, I did sell one of these for 70x, and it only craft it only cost me like 20x to make. So that was a big deal. And I'm gonna share with you guys uh, how that went and how you can do that too and uh, tap into that market as well. Uh, we got other things like rings and gloves like these. A variety of different things to come up. My focus is going to be primarily on dot damage classes. That's what I'm most knowledgeable about. I've only been playing for three seasons. There's a lot of stuff I still don't know. But hopefully uh, I was able to share with you some uh, good in-game knowledge. And you can uh, level up your high-end crafting game. and uh, Or start trying it out for yourself. Uh, with one of the safest bets, the Double Elevated Tailwind Onslaught Elusive Boots. Uh, can't go wrong with that one. Probably not going to make a huge amount of currency doing it, but it's a great place to start because it's very safe, and the market is, is very robust for that particular craft. Uh, stay tuned for the next craft, and uh, let me know what you guys would like to see uh, furthermore on uh, on future videos. Maybe I can uh, maybe I can do some something different, but yeah. Merry Christmas all. Um, I'm out for now. I'll be coming out with more videos. I'm off work, so I got a lot of time. Look forward to that. And I'll see you guys in the next video.